good day to all of you. Some of you I was able to see last week at our first outdoor service. It was so nice reconnecting in person after such a long time apart. As we begin our online worship service today, I invite you to move into a worship posture that is most comfortable for you. Hear the invitation and the call of God. Come, let us dwell in God's shelter. Let us dwell in God's work of art. Come because the earth is the Lord's and God's earth is our home. We live in God's world. We are not alone. We share this life with the heavens and the earth, with the waters and the land, with trees and grasses, with fish, birds and animals, with minerals and creatures of every form, and with all our brothers and sisters. God is good and everything God makes is good. God is love and everything God makes is love's fruit. Let us worship God. Amen. Let's pray together. Creator God, maker and shaper of all that is, seen and unseen, you are in the expanse and depth of creation and in the processes that make life possible. Yet we are distracted by the gods we make for ourselves and our lives become fractured and fragmented. In our brokenness, we disturb the earth's capacity to hold us. Instead, we find climate uncertainty and global injustice. Call us back from the brink. Help us to choose love, not fear. To change ourselves and not the planet. To act justly for the sake of the vulnerable and to make a difference today for life tomorrow. In your name, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a reading from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, until chapter 2, verse 4.
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a vault between the waters, to separate water from water. So God made the vault, and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky. And there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the water teem with the living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living thing with which the water teems, and that moves about in it, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. 
rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that all he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Classrooms and lands, loud morning test to sing to the Lord a new song. Athlete and man, loud cheering people, sing to the Lord a new song. God has done marvelous things. I choose sing. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth and when they were created. children it's good to say hello to you again and it was so good to have seen some of you last Sunday at our outdoor worship service and I um, really noticed how much I missed you so I'm looking forward to see all of you and more of you in future again when we can meet at church and um, have our fun time there today I would like to talk to you about creation Perhaps you know that the grown-ups already listened to a story about creation, how, how God created the world. And I would like to tell you the story again, but I would like to show you as well one of my most favorite book. And it's a children's book. It's a book that talks about creation and it's a book that begins, the very first page is dark. The very first page is dark because the creation began in darkness and in, there was nothing. The, the earth was formless and dark. There was no mountain and no lake and no sea and no river, no forests, no animal, nothing. And God said, hmm, that's not good here. So I will make something new. And he created light and you see that the earth is already quite happy because the earth knew with the light will come more and indeed more came light and darkness and then land came and water do you see this huge wave and with the water, the fish came and the plants, first the little scrubs and flowers and then the big huge trees 
And then after the plants, animals came. Animals like this one. Huge lion. And because there were other animals, but they were a little bit afraid of the lion, so they didn't want to be on the same page with him. And there were many, many animals. Some you might know very well, for example, the crocodile and uh, rhino. Where's the crocodile? And even animals. There's the crocodile. And even animals I don't know very well, and but perhaps you might know them. Animals like this one here. Do you know it? Tell me the next time we'll see each other. And then, finally, right, God created us. Us. You and me and your parents and your friends and everybody. Everybody was created by God. And then God said, hey, I did a wonderful job. The earth is just great and wonderful and smiling. So I would like you, dear people, tell you, take good care of the earth and I will help you. But uh, you have to be kind and gentle to each other and to the earth and to everything that is created. But you know the story, how the story went, right? We haven't done a good job with taking care of the earth. There's a lot of pollution and right now there are a lot of fires and the earth is really suffering. And not only a lot of pollution and fires and damages, no, people are not very kind to each other. There's violence and there are even wars. So God says, please learn to take care of each other and to be kind to each other because God says we are all connected. I am your creator and you are my creation and through me, your God, you are connected. You belong to each other and you have to take care of each other and you have to be kind to each other, to your friends, to your parents, to everyone, to the animals, to the plants. And I know that many of you are and I know that uh, you will talk to each other and we will talk to each other how to be kind and how to help the earth not to be like this, to be like this in future and not to be like this. I really like the other picture and I know we all can do this. Shall we? Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for your wonderful creation. Thank you for every, every human being, for every child and for every man and woman and for everybody. Thank you for the animals and the plants and thank you for the earth and the soil and the trees and everything that is yours. And help us to be kind and gentle to each other and help us to be kind to the earth. Help us to let the earth heal from what we have done and be patient with us, God, our creator and God, our love. And at the end we say, ah. Man. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen to the good news for today 
from the book of Revelation, chapter 21. And the author wrote, I looked again and could hardly believe my eyes. Everything above me was new, and everything below me was new, and everything around me was new because the heaven and earth that had been passed away, and the sea was gone completely. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descend descending out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride on her wedding day, adorned for her husband and for his eyes only. And I heard a great voice coming from the throne. See, the home of God is with his people, and God will live among them, and they will be God's people, and God himself will be with them, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death will be no more, and mourning no more, and crying no more, and pain no more, for the first things have gone away. And the one who sat on the throne announced to his creation, See, I am making all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will see to it that the thirsty drink freely from the fountain of the water of life. Words of the Living God. Amen. Bereshit him at Hashemayim ve'et ha'aretz. This is the first sentence of the Bible in its original language in Hebrew. Bereshit bar Elohim. I always found the first sentence in Hebrew mysterious and mystical. Bereshit bar Elohim. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I always found it mysterious and mystical, describing something mysterious and mystical in the beginning. And there are unimaginable things happening in the beginning. There was utter darkness first, and the earth was formless and empty, and there was chaos, and it was wild and loud and windy. A wind in the form of breath, as the Spirit of God blows over the mystery and thread of the deep. And there was no quiet, calm, gardening God, picking up a bit of clay or soil, pottering away and forming his creation out of the earth. No, there was a wild power of God beyond our imagining, beyond our understanding. And here's the thing, I'm always tempted to talk about God as exclusively merciful and loving and forgiving, and I strongly believe in this merciful and loving and forgiving God. But before I strongly believed in this God, I had to learn how to discard other images of God, for example, images of an angry God who will send me to hell when I don't obey his will. It is so healthy and wholesome and it's a blessing that we believe and live in a grace-based theology, believing in the presence of a merciful and loving and forgiving God. But today, or today we hear that there is more, much more, because in the beginning there was the Spirit of God moving over a formless, dark void and created, created out of chaos, out of empty spaces, created light and water and land and plants and animals and human beings. So in the beginning, we don't encounter a comforting, gentle God. We don't encounter a tamed God. On the contrary, the God we encounter here is passionately creating something out of nothing. It's a wild, wild power. And later, much later, remember when John the Baptist baptized, baptized, baptized Jesus at the river of Jordan, the Spirit of God tears apart the heavens and descends to the river onto a person and names him Beloved. This is my Beloved Son. 
And this same spirit grabbed Jesus by his neck, so to say, and drove him into the desert where Jesus encountered the devil. And then, and then, at these last days in Jerusalem, there at the cross, the spirit made the sun stopped shining and tears apart the curtain of the temple. And it was again dark and chaotic. And then with the final act, the spirit redeemed and liberated humankind, created, liberated, redeemed. The creating, liberating, redeeming spirit. I don't know about you, but sometimes, of course, especially in this COVID-19 times, I sometimes have the feeling of, of living in empty spaces, in voids in which we struggle and in which we lose ourselves, not knowing which way to turn or take the next step because we have too much on our plate or we are feeling empty or lonesome or just overwhelmed. These are voids or empty spaces in which we lose the people we love. Voids or empty spaces in which freedom suffers under political tyranny or disturbing terror. The Hebrew word in Genesis 1 for empty space is tohu wa bohu, which literally means confusion, emptiness, desolation. Tohu wa bohu. And into tohu wa bohu comes the wild, creating spirit of God. And into emptiness, confusion and desolation comes the Spirit of God, the same Spirit of God who breathes light into darkness, the same Spirit of God who creates something beautiful out of chaos. God's breath, God's Spirit creates light and life out of formless, dark, empty spaces, creates light and life out of our emptiness and our desolation. And God gives the same sustaining breath to each of us every and each day as we move through our days. God's Spirit created an earth land out of no land and makes a way out of no way and gives, gives hope out of no hope. And the same wild God breathes that power into you, passionately creating something new. Don't you see? Don't you listen? As we heard, see, God says, I'm making all things new. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will see to it that the thirsty drink freely from the fountain of the water of life. Might we get glimmers of this something new here and now? I think so. In our lives? I think so. In our church lives? I know. Might we get glimmers of this something new here and now? Moments of feeling the spirit entering empty spaces? How do you hear this promise today? And what story might you offer for a God is giving you a sense of things being made new? I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear your story, how God gives and fills his spirit into your empty space, into your tohu wa buhu and creates something new. And I'm sure there are many stories to share. Amen.
Let us pray our offering prayer together. God of harvest, gardener supreme, you place us within the rhythm of your creation. Feed us, equip us, and having provided for us, look to a different harvest, a fruitfulness of lives in service to you and others. God of harvest, feed us, prune us, harvest us, that our lives might bring glory to you. We gladly share our earthly gifts with your work and your people here on earth as one of many signs of your love for us. Amen. Let us pray together. When I offer the call of giver of life, be welcome to respond with sustain your creation. Creating, creative and creator God, for vulnerable, poor, and devastated communities who are already suffering the effects of climate change, for developing countries struggling with rampant development and overseas tourism, for the forest fires along the U.S. western coast, we pray for relief and for transformation. Giver of life, sustain your creation. For the land, the waters, the islands, the air, the animals, and plants which struggle for survival as a result of human greed and abuse help us follow through with healthy, tangible action that will heal the wounds in Mother Earth. Giver of life, sustain your creation. For industrialized nations which urgently need to make adjustments to their lifestyles and adopt appropriate environmental policies, Help us to see that these choices exist far beyond the political sphere into the very heart of humanity. Giver of life, sustain your creation. For developing nations whose national economy is largely dependent on earning export crude petroleum and other polluting substances who will have to diversify their economies. Giver of life, sustain your creation. For an increase in solidarity in all your people and practical support with those communities most affected by climate change. Giver of life, sustain your creation. For ourselves, that we may adjust our lives to be in harmony with creation and that we may work for climate justice for all people. Giver of life, sustain your creation. For those in our midst needing healing, for Melita, for Ursula and John, for Fred and Jean, for Otto and Irene, for the family of Fred Elgert as they mourn Fred's passing, and for the family of Emily who passed away of cancer. Giver of life, sustain your creation. Move in our breath, in our bones, in our blood and in our spirits. 
urge us to communion with you in creation. Create urgency, create expediency. Rile us up to protect what you have created, even as we find peace and wonder in the natural world. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Everyone is welcome to the Lord's table. If you haven't prepared the table yet, please press the pause button and do so with bread or cracker, wine or juice. The peace of God be with you always. Amen. Let us pray. We praise you, God, because you are holy, because you are gracious, because you took on our humanity so your love might be seen face to face. In Jesus Christ, you broke the power of evil by dying on the cross, and Jesus' life, which was broken in love, becomes the wholeness that strengthens us to live life abundantly. As we are on the journey, Jesus asks us to abide in him, inviting us to his table, where the Spirit blesses the bread and the cup, and we are gathered together. Because Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, saying to his disciples, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after the meal, he took the cup, gave thanks, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Christ has died, welcoming our death as his own. Christ is risen by the gift of God's love and power. Christ will come again to fulfill God's words. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for us. The blood of Christ shed for us. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
few announcements for you today. Thank you to Jordan, Sherry, and our readers, Andrea and Alexander, for helping make our kickoff service a great one. Thank you, Frank, for your tech support and putting our video services together each week. Many of you have been asking when and if we'll be hosting in-person services again. Our church council is meeting Tuesday evening and we'll be discussing that very thing together. We'll keep you all updated as details emerge. My ordination service will be live streamed this Wednesday, September 16th at 4.30 p.m. The link is on social media and on our website. The first youth committee meeting is happening next Sunday, September 20th at 1 p.m. It will be outdoors at Victoria Park, picnic site number six. There are picnic tables, but feel free to bring your own camp chairs or lawn chairs. Bring masks and water bottles and whatever snacks you want to eat for yourself. We'll see you there. Do you remember the work from last year about engaging our mission and vision? Well, Trinity is taking all of that work to the next level. Starting Sunday, September 20th, and running for three consecutive Sundays, people will meet in small, safely distanced groups to discuss how to implement our mission through vision. If you haven't been contacted already, call the church office to sign up for a small group. Come prepared having watched the online Sunday service from Trinity as the video will pertain to each week's small group. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with his peace and give you his peace. In the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, be at peace. Amen.